Hi there, and welcome to this month's Dumbbox lesson. This month we're learning about circuits and wearable technology. If you watched our last video, you just saw us make a light up cell phone case, which is our first foray into the wearable technology sphere. And now I am so excited to teach you how that works. So the word circuit sounds an awful lot like the word circle, which is correct enough in that a circuit needs to move in a circle, meaning that the electrons that originate from our battery, our power source, have to move through this circuit in a circle and end up back at the battery in order for the circuit to work. So in most circuits, you'll find a power source like a battery or something else, and the electrons move through the wires, and eventually they'll run into something that they have to move through. So in most cases, or in some cases, you'll find something like an LED. And when the electrons get to this LED, they move through it doing work, which turns on the LED, and then they move back out, and they move back through the wires into the other side of the battery. So now that we know how the electrons need to flow, and that they need to flow in a continuous circle, we can talk about switches. So the best example of a switch in this month's box is with our Electrify Light It Kit. We are super excited to be working with Electrify this month on circuits and teaching you guys about wearable technology. So by working with your Electrify board, you can learn a lot of these cool concepts by playing with it and taking it apart and putting it back together. In some cases, you will find a switch on a circuit, and that switch is kind of like a bridge that goes up and down. So when the circuit is turned off, the switch is off, the bridge is up. So think of like a bridge going over a body of water that cars are trying to get over in rush hour. There's a huge backup, nobody's moving, nothing's happening, and everybody's upset. <laughs> so when you turn the circuit on, like this, you're actually pushing the bridge down and you're allowing electrons to move over that bridge to do the rest of their job. So if you do that, that's off, the bridge is up. You turn this on, the bridge is down, and the electrons are moving. You'll see a second kind of switch, which does the exact same job, only this switch is not based on the movement of our fingers. It's based on the movement of the switch itself. So if we turn it, there is something in this switch that's closing the gap like a bridge and then opening it. See how that works? Now that we know about the different components of circuits, we can discuss the different kinds of circuits. So there are two main circuit types to know about. Number one is series, and number two is parallel. Series circuits work by having a continuous circle added piece by piece by piece. So that could mean you have one circle with just three different light bulbs around it. And the more light bulbs you add, the more work the electrons have to do to get back to the battery. So the more you add, the dimmer the lights get. That's called a series circuit. If you're missing a piece of your series circuit, it won't turn on. So if one of your lights is broken, the rest of the circuit breaks, which is kind of like Christmas lights. Once a Christmas light breaks, it doesn't turn back on until you find the missing piece that's broken. The second kind of circuit is the parallel circuit. The way the parallel circuit works is that there are multiple pieces involved. So there could be three light bulbs, say, combined into the circuit. But what's different is that instead of they all share the same electron source, they each have their own source back to the battery. So if a piece of this is missing, say one of the light bulbs goes out, it means that the rest of them can still light up. Because every time the circuit begins to move again, kind of like a heartbeat, you push the blood through and it moves through and back in. The same thing with the electrons. But when it's going through, it's taking a different path every time. And it happens instantaneously, so that if one path doesn't work, it'll still have two different paths to go down, which means it's still working without the broken light. That's a parallel circuit. Now that we've talked a little bit about how the circuits work, what a switch is, what a parallel circuit and a series circuit are, I am so excited to tell you guys a little bit about wearable technology and where that's going. The first instance of wearable technology came about in the 1980s with the development of Casio's calculator watch. It was basically a calculator strapped to your wrist and you could just beep, bop, boop, do some math. Very similar to the way we do math on our iPhones, only we don't strap those directly to our wrists. Now though, instead of strapping calculators to our wrists, we've seen a lot of developments in this field, such as the Apple Watch, an entire computer strapped to your wrist, which is pretty amazing. And not just the Apple Watch, Fitbits. The Fitbit is also a form of wearable technology in that it will track heart rate, it'll track walking distance, all sorts of health metrics that we can use to improve our lives as humans. Another way we've seen wearable technology develop is in our visual headset usage. This could be something like Google Glass, which was basically a cell phone that you wore over your eye and you could tap to make changes, take photos, answer phone calls, things like that. 
You can also see this development in the HoloLens, which is a Microsoft project that basically superimposes digital images over everyday life. This is different from something like Oculus Rift, which is a headset you wear that lets you explore virtual reality, giving you an entirely different reality instead of what you see. So you wouldn't be able to walk around wearing one of those. I'm also personally super excited about the development of fashion wearable technology. So this could be things like earrings that light up or necklaces that can track your heartbeat. These things exist. And my favorite example of this is the dress that Katy Perry wore to the Met Gala in 2010. It was designed by Cute Circuit and it contained over 3,000 micro LEDs to make the dress change colors whenever she moved. It was an amazing dress and you can just tell from these pictures that it was such a great step towards new fashion. So apart from fashion, we've also seen wearable technology extend to the realm of medicine, which is such an exciting development. This can be done in the form of electronic tattoos to begin with. To me, this is crazy. This is the most sci-fi realistic portrayal of wearable technology that exists right now. These implantables are used to read different electrical impulses coming from the body. That could be done in the form of muscle contractions, it can be used in EEGs, and EEG just stands for electroencephalogram. An EEG is something that goes on your brain to detect irregular brain waves or brain patterns sent by electrical impulses so that you know something's wrong or not. I'm also super excited to hear that a lot of insulin pumps are being generated for wearable technology. So the way this would work is that this insulin pump would be implanted under the skin. And eventually, instead of having to check their blood sugar and adjust their insulin manually, a lot of diabetics could just have this wearable technology relay information to a computer that does it automatically, saving them time and pain by pricking their finger every time they have to check. So now that we know how circuits are made and how they're being used to make wearable technology even more feasible and accessible in today's society, we are so excited that you are experiencing them in the form of our light-up cell phone cases. And not just that, we've also provided a second set of components for you to explore this topic even further. Now I wouldn't go so far as recommending you implant them as an implantable under your skin. Please do not do that. I will be very upset. Um, but I would love, love, love to see what other stuff you guys can come up with. What other sorts of inventions for wearable technology can you find with your extra pieces? So send us your submissions using the hashtag STEMBOX, and I cannot wait to talk to you guys next month about all the chromatography stuff we're doing. Until then, I'm Kina, and I'll see you guys next time.